following is a presentation of HBO Sports. Tonight, we want to revisit a story we first brought you last year about a then little known American League relief pitcher named Steve Delabar, a guy who'd had perhaps the most unusual path to the major leagues of anyone in the game. Well, this season, Delabar's improbable tale added a new chapter, one that made his rags to riches story even more remarkable. Our Mary Carrillo has the update. Well, here it is. It's the 84th. MLB All-Star Game. And it's yours At the tonight. start of this year's All-Star Game, the biggest names and best players in baseball were out on display. But it wasn't until the seventh inning, when a no-name pitcher entered in relief, that fans got to see, whether they knew it or not, the very best story in the game. So two years ago, you were a substitute teacher. Does it make much sense to you? Not really. <laughs> it was Steve Delabar's own story but he could barely believe it himself. Well, there's goals that you set for yourself, but for it to happen, that's, that's another thing. And this is really happening. <laughs> this is really happening. All that kind of stuff you saw when you were a little kid, watching the All-Star Game on TV. And I'm one of those guys. <laughs> Two years ago, Steve Delabar wasn't even a ball player. He was a substitute teacher here at John Harden High School. He'd once dreamed of being a major league pitcher, but he was never good enough to get past single A ball, the lowest level of the minors. For six years, he tried and tried until his arm finally gave out. I felt a huge pop and I, I said, that, that's it right there. So I went in the dugout. It, it seemed like there was an alien coming out of my arm. Delabar's arm was broken so badly, doctors needed a metal plate and nine screws to repair the damage. His big league prospects went from one in a million to zero. Now a washed up ex-jock pushing 30, it was time to find himself a new life. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm, this is it. I'm going to school, I'm finishing school. Got to get on with my life. I'm getting, I'm, this is a new chapter. He went back home to Kentucky, took a substitute teaching job, and just to stay around the game he loved, became an assistant coach on the school's baseball team. Eager to contribute, he began teaching the kids on the team a somewhat odd new strengthening program that was just beginning to be offered at a local baseball facility. But I wanted to learn the program to teach the program. So you didn't think you were applying it to yourself, to your own, your own baseball career? No. It was geared toward the kids. But a funny thing happened along the way. Doing the program, Steve Delabar's arm began to feel good again. Before long, as good as ever. So he began testing himself using a radar gun to measure his arm strength. I initially test at 89. The second test was a consistent 93. I mean, I'd never been consistent 93 ever. I'm like, hey, this is legit. I retest again four weeks later, and <laughs> numbers skyrocket, 95, 96. And here you are, you played in your elbow, screws, holding that in, and now you're throwing the ball better than you ever had. Ever. Ever. And arm feels amazing. <laughs> Tom House had gotten word that an old broken down pitcher was thriving with the offbeat training program they'd invented. A program based on the use of weighted balls, ranging from two pounds to two ounces. Six ounce guys, six ounce please. House is a former major league pitcher and coach who has long been considered one of the game's most innovative teachers. The football is a real good device to help maintain strength and keep mechanics sound. Affiliated with the training facility in Kentucky, where Steve Delabar had begun working out. <laughs> I didn't believe him. Yeah. When, he, when, he, when, when you sent me the whatever it was with his elbow and all those, yeah, yeah, I, I said... Oh, you saw the picture of his elbow? Yeah, no no yeah. friggin' way. But Steve Delabar had become a believer. His wife, Jamie, an English teacher at the high school, started to see just where this might be headed. He would come home and say, guess how hard I threw? Guess how hard I threw? And I would just say, oh, that's great. You know, that's awesome how hard you threw. And I never said anything, but I knew that he wanted to go back. A local scout for the Seattle Mariners got a tip about Delabar's shocking progress and offered to give him a tryout. I actually call our high school catcher. I call him. I get him out of school the next day. <laughs> <laughs> nice teacher. Yeah, you I, get him, I get him out of school, and he's pumped up. To, you know, he's catching me. How well did you throw that day? I was 94, 95, 96. I think I might have had a couple 97s in there. Uh, it, it was a really, really good, you know, trial. Good enough, it turned out. The Mariners took a flyer on Delabar and signed him to a deal. 
he would begin right where he'd left off, in single A ball, the lowest level of the minor leagues. Only now, Steve Delabar and his newfound arm began to rocket up the ranks. And then they said, hey, you're going to double A. And I'm thinking, this is great. Stretching Delabar, here's the 0-2 pitch on the way, swing and a miss, he struck him out. They call me in, they say, you're going to triple A. I said, sweet. <laughs> Delabar trying to close out the top of the ninth. His pitch is a swing and a miss, strike three, and the inning is over. And in the fall of 2011, Delabar was called into the manager's office. And he goes, tell me what you were doing at this point last year. I said, I was a substitute teacher. I was going to school, trying to finish my degree. I was a college or high school baseball coach. I was playing softball, and I was back home. He goes, well, that's the best part about my job, being able to tell guys like you that you're going to the big leagues. And it was, it was, it was awesome. Who was your first phone call? First phone call was my wife. I couldn't hold it together. I lost. <sighs> I don't think it changes any time I tell the story. So I called her and I said, I'm going to the big leagues. And she said, you know, she was so excited. She started crying. And then I called my dad. I lost it there, too. And then, I, I mean, I probably cried all night. As Delabar's family and friends in Kentucky tried to process what was happening... Give me a 95, Anthony. The men who'd rebuilt him, Tom House, were trying to figure out if Delabar's success was a fluke or whether their little experiment might actually be working. By this point, they'd spread the gospel of the new program to hundreds of kids at a few different facilities around the country. And they kept hearing the same thing. Everybody's fastball, male, female, young, old, everybody's fastball gets better, and they're healthier. But why? What made this program different from all the others? Baseball coaches have been tinkering with weighted balls for decades. Arm speed, guys, arm speed. House himself had been trying to solve the riddle of keeping pitchers healthy for more than 30 years, but says his big breakthrough happened by accident. One day, here at USC about three years ago, House was studying, of all things, my sport, tennis. Now, I stole something from tennis. Leasing my sport? Without a doubt. We Good. figured out that tennis players very seldom have bad shoulders. Bad elbows, but very seldom bad shoulders. Why? Because they hang on to the racket. The physical act of serving a, 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 tennis, a tennis ball and pitching a ball are very similar. So I'm thinking, OK, why are these guys healthy and our guys are not? Because they hang on to the racket. So instead of just throwing various weighted balls, House designed exercises where players also hold on to the balls. Throws, House explained, work the front side of the shoulder. Holes work the back of the shoulder. The result, they said, is a stronger and healthier shoulder because it is more balanced. The kicker? Velocity goes up. By the time Steve Delabar arrived in Seattle as a 28-year-old rookie, he was armed with one of the better fastballs in the league, even if nobody knew. Steve Delabar will take over in relief, and he makes his major league debut this afternoon. I'm excited, heart starts racing. I mean, it's pumping. I don't hear anything. I don't, I don't see it. I mean, I'm locked in. Delabar's first pitch of the big leagues, a swing and a foul. He's got a plate in his elbow and nine screws. He showed me the x-rays look like a Home Depot project. Fly ball into right center field. Over so I get the first guy out. That first out is big. Well, the next guy comes up, and I get a, I get a strike, you know, I strike him out. Fastball, swing and a miss, strike three. 96 mile an hour fastball. So two up and two down. No wonder the Mariners signed this guy. And the 0 2. Swing and a miss, strike three. I had 50 text messages and everybody from back home just, I mean, jumping up and down and excited. And it, it, was, it was a pretty good, you know, pretty awesome feeling. As Delabar adjusted to the big leagues, his wife Jamie was still trying to wrap her head around her husband's new job. I'm like, that is my husband on ESPN. And I, I just, it's, I couldn't believe it. So he goes from being a substitute teacher. Yeah. 
It doesn't even sound like a real story. No, it doesn't. And it doesn't even I, feel real. I mean, when we when people ask us, it doesn't feel real. <laughs> it's I'm like, this is my life. I guess you couldn't even written it, you know, you couldn't have written a better story. Turns out Steve Delabar was wrong. Steve Delabar strikes out to side. A year after we first met him, Delabar's story has gone from improbable to impossible. This season, now pitching with the Toronto Blue Jays, Delabar became one of the best relievers in baseball and earned a trip to the All-Star Game. And Steve Delabar. It's an awesome experience to go out there and they run through the line and you know you tip your cap and smile and and uh, it's, it's something I'll never forget. He faced one batter, Buster Posey, the reigning National League MVP. Here's a 2-2 pitch. A strikeout ends the inning. Well, what did you expect from a fairy tale? Quicker, David, quicker. Come on, go, go, go. Delabar's success has inspired Coach Tom House to expand his pioneering work. And he's now training athletes in sports beyond baseball, like golfers and quarterbacks. Ten more seconds. Giddy up. Giddy up. You may know two of his latest pupils, Tom Brady and Drew Brees. For everyone involved, the events of the past year have been life-changing in more ways than one. <laughs> Two years ago, you had the salary of a substitute teacher. I'm in a different tax bracket. <laughs> <laughs> a very different tax bracket? Very, very different tax bracket. Yeah. But for Delabar, the most exciting development of the past year came at home, when Jamie gave birth to their first child, a girl named Adley. The last time we spoke, you said it yourself. You said you couldn't write a better story. But now you just keep improving upon this story. <laughs> you keep writing. Yeah. It could be a story that, that you know, I tell Adley about, and she writes about it, and then the teacher's like, no, nope, no, nope, it's, too, it's too, uh, that's too much of a fairy tale. It doesn't happen. <laughs>